Good morning, neighborhood kids and everyone else. I'm so glad you could be here today to hear another story from God's Word, the Bible, which we know is absolutely true and completely trustworthy. We have met a lot of people in our Bible stories in the Old Testament, people just like us who were trying to live lives as devoted fans of God, but they sometimes got distracted by the little g-gods of wood and metal and stone or sports or books or all kinds of other things that were around them and that are around us. And that can be sin. We have learned that God first spoke of a Savior way back here in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned. And even though the Israelites continued to sin, God always forgave them when they asked, just like he will do for us when we ask him to forgive us of our sin. As we come to the end of the Old Testament, there were many prophets. Prophets are men, primarily, that God raised up to remind the Israelites to worship the one true God and who told about the coming Messiah or Savior. We know that God made covenants with Abraham and David <clears throat> to bless the whole earth through them and that a descendant of David's would be one to sit on the throne over Israel. We know that Jesus is the legal, rightful heir to the throne of David, that he is the only one who can really sit on that throne. We learned that in Matthew chapter 1 when we studied his genealogy. Well, now we are in the New Testament, and we're studying these Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that tell us the story of Jesus' birth and life, his death and resurrection. That is the good news or the Gospel. Would you turn with me today to Matthew chapter 2, and we will pick up our new story, which is going to teach us that the right response, the very best response to the birth of Jesus is to worship him. Well, in verse 1, we read that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Bethlehem, he is here in northern Judah, that there were some magi who came from the east. These magi were wise men. They had studied all kinds of information and literature. They would have known about these prophecies of a Messiah. They were astrologers. They studied the stars, and they were the ones who noticed something different in the sky on the night that Jesus was born. We don't know exactly where they came from, but the east, far away, could have been a thousand miles, and it would have been a very long journey for them to come there. They probably used camels because that would have been the best transportation back then. Camels didn't need a lot to drink. They could go a long way before having more water. So whoever these men were and however it is that they recognized the star, the point is that they did recognize that star and they knew something special had happened that night and they chose to prepare and follow the star and make the journey to Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is where they saw the star and that is where they had come. There was a king on the throne. His name was King Herod. And the Magi came directly to the king. There may have been three. We think there's three because there were three gifts. But the Bible doesn't really tell us how many there were. And they probably had some people traveling with them. So they come to King Herod because they want King Herod to tell them where this new king is. And they say, King, we've come. We saw a star in the sky. We know a king has been born. Can you tell us where to find him? Well, King Herod heard that a new king had been born, and he got upset. He was disturbed or troubled, the Bible tells us. And he wanted to know, too, where this new king was. Do you know why he was so troubled and not excited about a new king? He was from Edom. He was from a country that was actually from the descendants of Esau. You remember Jacob and Esau, they were twins. Jacob's family became the Israelites. Esau's family became the Edomites. King Herod did not have the right to sit on that throne of Israel according to the Bible. 
the Romans had put them there because the Romans were ruling the world and they wanted their people there. Herod was so jealous and so afraid that somebody was going to take the throne away from him that he actually killed his own family members so that they could not become the king. Isn't that terrible? That is how jealous he was. So he told these wise men, he said, you go find that baby and you come and tell me where he is because I want to worship him too. And so the wise men were going to go along their way. The Herod called the, chief, the yeah, chief priests and the teachers of the law to come to him. And he said, I have heard about the Christ being born. Where is he born? And they replied. They shared from him a scripture from the prophets, Matthew, excuse me, Micah 5, 2, that says, But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over all of Israel. We know that prophecy became true because Mary gave birth to Jesus right there in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was very close, just a few miles south of Jerusalem. Well, King Herod called the wise men back. And he said, wise men, tell me when that star first appeared. When did you notice it? You know, it was a big, bright star in the sky. They couldn't miss it. And they said it was about two years ago that they had seen that star. And maybe you think two years is a really long time to have waited. But remember, they first had to see the star. And they probably watched it for a little while to see what was happening to it. Is it staying? And then they prepared to make their journey. And then they went a 1,000 miles by walking and on camels. That would take a really long time for them to come. So while they had been here talking with Herod, the wise men noticed that the star reappeared. And they went on their way. They wanted to follow the star again. And the Bible tells us that they followed the star. The star led them. It made me think of the cloud or the pillar of fire that led the Israelites through the wilderness before when they had left Egypt. And that star led the wise men to a house in Bethlehem. Now, maybe you're thinking, oh, didn't Mary and Joseph just stay in the stable forever? No, they didn't. They got a house nearby, and the baby Jesus grew. And the wise men came, and it, the Bible tells us when they saw Mary and Jesus, they bowed down and worshipped him as the king. They also brought him very rich and special presents, maybe in a fancy box like this. And they opened their boxes, and the Bible tells us that they gave him frankincense. Frankincense was a beautiful fragrance that they actually burned in the temple, and they brought that to Jesus as an act of worship. They brought him gold. Gold still says somebody's very wealthy, doesn't it? But they brought him a gift fit for a king. And they brought him myrrh. Myrrh was an interesting one because if you jump ahead to the life of Jesus, you know that he died and was buried in the tomb. And his friends would have put myrrh on his body when it was dead to help it smell a little bit better. Beautiful gifts that you would give to a king. These wise men recognized who Jesus was. We don't know exactly what the star was. There's a lot of different ideas out there. But don't you think that our great God, who created the whole entire world, could have created anything he wanted to show that his son had been born that night? And he chose to create this beautiful star that the wise men followed As we come to the end of our story here, we see how people responded differently. King Herod had heard about the news, and it frightened him. And he actually went on to order that all of the baby boys who were two years old and younger would be killed that very night so that they could not take the throne from him. 
The wise men were warned in a dream, go home a different way, and they did, so that they were protected. And Jesus was also protected because an angel warned Joseph, take your family and go to Egypt. And Joseph got up and did that. Matthew's record of the wise men doesn't give us a lot of details. Did you hear me say, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. What we do know is how the wise men responded. Their actions said that they believed God. They believed that this star in the sky pointed them to the one true king. And so as we come to this Christmas season where we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, I would ask you, have you chosen, like the wise men, to worship Jesus as your savior?